funny scenario one? Now, Ms. Harvey, you told us a lot about conversations that you overheard between Cameron Poole and Whipple and on direct examination. I'd like to talk about one of those in particular. Now, you said that you overheard a conversation while you were in the bathroom, correct? That's correct. And that was in part of the employee locker room. That is correct. And you overheard Whit Bowman and Cameron Poole talking while you were in there. Mm-hmm. Well, you were not supposed to be in that locker room, were you? No, I am technically not allowed in the employee locker room. But uh, I've worked there before, and I think I spend more time there than the employees, so I don't usually feel bad about it. So that's a yes. You technically weren't supposed to be in that locker room. Technically, I'm not supposed to be in that. Now, when you overheard this conversation, you also said you saw a knife, correct? That is correct. Well, when you saw this knife, you were only looking through a slit in the door, correct? Correct. And you admit that it was difficult to see because of that. Well, yeah, you have a limited scope of vision. And in fact, you're not even sure exactly which locker Whit Bowman put that knife into. No, they're labeled, the names are small. And you cannot tell which locker he put that into, correct? I wouldn't say 100%, no. I'd like to talk to you about August 30th. You know, you said you heard a gunshot, correct? That is correct. And shortly, or right after this, you, the ride went into darkness, correct? Yes. And while the ride was in darkness, you saw Cameron Poole escape, right? Correct. Now, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your previous work history. Now, you said you worked at Rock to Work, correct? That is correct. Now, you are familiar with the employee handbook that they have there? Yes. This handbook is generally relied upon by all employees at Rock to Work, right? Yes. Now, in this handbook, it does not mention an active shooter, does it? No, but I would say an active shooter is an emergency. <laughs> But it does not specifically say anything about an active shooter. It doesn't lay out all different kinds of emergencies, no. This active employee handbook also talks about an emergency stop button, does it? Yes. Emergency protocol is pressing the emergency stop button. And the emergency stop button, it says, is located in a different position for every ride. Isn't that true? That is true. Now, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the summer of 2012. You said yourself you were an active goer of Rock to Roll, right? Yes, multiple times a week. Now, during the summer of 2012, you never saw Whit Bowman take any cash from customers, did you? No, she wasn't working to get that. You never saw Whit Bowman distribute any wristbands to customers either, did you? Right, that would be a thing that happened at the ticket booth. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. out uh, about the employee manual it does say about emergency protocol correct that is correct and what does the manual say about what to do in an emergency situation in an emergency situation you press the emergency stop button the lights will come on in the dome and the ride will stop on its track and is that what happened after a gun was shot no I can only assume that Ms. Bowman accidentally pressed the maintenance button uh, which will turn off all of the lights but the ride will keep going you're not supposed to do that under any circumstances that's only for maintenance. So the lights actually went off on the right? Correct, not on. Thank you, Anna. No further question. I'm going to be able to step up. No recross, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Kimball. Could you please state your name for the court spelling your last? My name is Frances Kimball, K-I-M-B-A-L-L. -L. Now, Detective Kimball, can you state some of your qualifications for the court, please? Certainly. I am currently a police officer at the Breckenridge Police Department with the Financial Crimes Unity Unit, and um, I graduated from the top of my class from the Breckenridge Police Department 10 years ago and joined the force shortly thereafter. I have worked as a lead detective in over 200 embezzlement cases. And uh, when did you first become involved in the uh, financial case at Rock and Roll? I first became involved when the park owner, J.C. Longstreet, contacted me on August 1st, 2012, 
because he was worried about some financial dealings at the park. And uh, did Wong Tree give you access to all of the park's financial records? Yes, I spoke with the park's accountant, Haley Floyd, and she gave me access to the documents. Your Honor, at this time I move to, I would like to approach the witness with the document of the United States Exhibit F. Have you reviewed this? No, Your Honor, I have not. Can you review it? Now, Detective Kimball, do you recognize this document? Yes, they are the financial documents of Brock Teward for 2010, 2011, and 2012. Is it a fair and accurate copy? Yes. Now, Detective Kimball, looking over this document as a seasoned uh, member of the Financial Crimes Unit, what can you tell us? Um, from 2000. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Your Honor, this is not hearsay. We have placed me, me according to um, rule eight oh two. Sorry, eight oh three <coughs> six. Records of a regularly conducted activity. This is the record that was kept in the course of a regularly, of a regularly conducted activity, which is a business. Rockford was an amusement park and a business. Therefore, this is a document that is not hearsay. Have the problems of eight oh three six. 836, that's correct. Been met? No, Your Honor. Uh, one of the prongs labeled A has not been met. What is that prong? Uh, no foundation has been laid. Uh, this record was made at or near the time um, of August 30th, 2012. I agree. Sustained. Yeah. If the uh, friend of mine renew my question to make and regard my questions for the foundation court, yes, you may. Detective Kimball, the uh, very last document in the set is, what is that a record of? Um, it's the records of 2012, months of April through August. And so the last month in that is August. Yes. And so this, especially this last record, is very regularly conducted business that was established in the year August 30th of that year. Yes. Thank you. So, Detective Kimball, what do you observe as a seasoned financial police officer from that document? Um, I observe that. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Have you heard? Sustained. Yes, Your Honor. And Detective Kimball, as a member of the Financial Crimes Unit, when you have worked in dozen cases before, did you see any similarities between those and the one you are currently working? Objection, Your Honor. Again, this is hearsay. Um, by comparing her knowledge to the statements in the document, she will be eliciting how, what the document itself says, and it's still hearsay. Your Honor, I made no reference to the document and what I said. I was merely asking if, in the case of Rock Door, which Long Street had called her to investigate, she was investigating, she had noticed any similarities to previous cases. The document has nothing to do with this. Does she know about the finances of Rockford World outside of the context of these documents? She has stated that she spoke with Haley Floyd, the Parks Accountant. Is that true? Even if it was true, Your Honor, um, that, that conversation would still be hearsay. Haley Floyd is, hasn't been called yet and therefore can't be questioned at this, at this point in the trial. Okay. I'm going to sustain. You can absolutely make sure that you lay the foundation for 8036 and you want And uh, Detective Kimball, at this moment, I would like to mission to a place witness. Mission to the document? Yes. This time I would like to ask your honor question I think it's document evidence. Objection, your honor. The document is still here, sir. Is it 
Your Honor, I believe I have already established the three problems of this document that it was made. Your Honor, may I respond uh, to the question? Your Honor, may I please finish? 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 Your
That is correct. I interviewed Haley Floyd, and my conversation with her was what initially made me suspicious of Whit Bowman, because um, Floyd stated that um, Floyd was quite shaken up, and Objection, she kept. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Well, Your Honor, according to Rule Eight Hundred Three, two objections to hear, or uh, acceptance to hearsay. This counts as an excited utterance, as the witness was in the middle of stating when interrupted that Haley Floyd had experienced a deeply traumatic incident, having been threatened with a knife, and was repeating this comment over and over. Is it an excited utterance? Yes, Your Honor. Based on that exception, I will withdraw my objection. Excellent. Thank you, Detective Kimball. So, as I was, so as you were, can you please continue to repeat what you were saying? Uh, what did Haley Floyd say when that uh, piece of happened? Um. But Haley Floyd seemed quite shaken up, so I made sure that the EMTs checked her out too. And she kept repeating that the weapon Pooh used to attack her was Witt's knife. And uh, Detective Kimball, did you know who Witt was at this time? Um, not at that moment, no. But I, when I went to see who was operating the right of um, Town of Terror, that's when I found out that Witt Bowman was the young woman operating it. Um, at that moment, I found out that Billy Isaacs was the usual operator, and when I found out that Bowman had requested the change, that made me even more suspicious. And um, when you were, and did you do that interview with Bowman? Yes, um, I interviewed with Bowman, and um, she kept giving me different statements, which is a usual sign of guilt, and um, that's when I saw a cell phone lying on the desk on the operator booth and I requested that she hand it over to me and she did and I saw a message from a contact then named S. Cam indicating that the received um, that the person that received it helped the sender escape. Objection, Your Honor, you're saying to the text messages in which she's referring to? And on what grounds do you believe it's your saying? Um, the definition itself of hearsay, an out-of-court statement being text messages uh, being used to prove the truth of matter certain. Response? Your Honor, The detective believed at this time that um, <coughs> the statement on the cell phone, as was later confirmed, be from Cameron Poole. Cameron Poole as, is a definite <coughs> unavailable, and these statements would be made in opposition to his own interest. Therefore, under exclusions to hearsay, Rule 801, I believe that this ought to be the stand. Under that exception, Your Honor, um, the statement is not hearsay. I would draw my objection. And so you went over this phone, Detective Kimball? Yes, um, I saw the phone and the text message said, um, got out, thanks, talk to you later. Excellent. And um, then Detective Kimball, did you proceed to, interview, to do a full and complete interview of all of the individuals involved? Um, I did. I interviewed everyone involved and based upon um, with Bowman's different statements and the suspicious cell phone messages, and my previous investigation of the situation, I considered I had enough evidence to arrest with Bowman, which I proceeded to do. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, testimony based on hearsay, may I explain? Yes. She stated that based on certain interviews that she had with other individuals and statements of with Bowman, she concluded to place with Bowman under arrest. Those statements from other people are hearsay at this time. And this testimony is inadmissible. Your Honor, if the statement in question referring to was the statement from Hay made by Haley Floyd, that was already determined not to be hearsay, then the opposing counsel has already conceded that, and it can be admitted on those grounds. Were you arguing that there were multiple statements that went into this decision to arrest? That's what the witness just said, Your Honor. So what about the people besides Haley Floyd? Your Honor. When the witness was referring to statements, she could have been referring to multiple things that Haley Floyd said, or to the statements of the party declarant unavailable, Cameron Poole. 
new statement has already has but also been She didn't specify it was just those two people. So I'm going to miss a statement, and if you can elicit that she based her decision to rest on just people for whom there's a hearsay exception, that's fine. But I'll let you renew your objection if he's not weighing that, or if you believe that one of these two people he says aren't hearsay are hearsay. Yes, Sean. And the fact is simple. In uh, your, as you have already stated, you have got this from the public collection of the police Is that correct? Right? Yes, and that was sparred by a big fact. Uh, Your Honor, um, um, point of order, and um, excuse me if I sound rude, but can I ask if the opposing counsel um, raise his voice? I'm having a hard time hearing his questions. Oh, my apologies. Um, is this volume all right? Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, no, I, I have that problem. I do apologize, but I'm having a hard time hearing. Is, no, it, I fully understand. is it possible that you could move a little closer to him so that your voice isn't heading in front of him? Um, if it's is that right? I mean, yeah, I'm just, again, I'm, I'm hard hearing at times, and no, I do apologize. Okay, I'm glad you resolved that. Good job, guys. Um, so, in the back of the table, as you were saying, when uh, you talked, okay, you've already mentioned that you spoke to him before and came before we were saying that you had to this was your side. Is that correct? Right? Yes, and that was part of my decision on arresting with Bowman. Thank you, thank you. No further questions at this time.